Welcome to Oxygen Not Included. Uh, this is going to be a different kind of series. I want this series to be more informative, more of like a tutorial than a let's play, which is what we're usually doing on this channel. So what I want to do for this first episode is we'll be getting up to the point where we've chosen our dupes. And then once we're in, I want to go through like all of the UI because there's a lot of these like ones, tutorials or like uh, you can play along kind of things, but they never go through things like what do the different overlays mean and that kind of stuff. So that's what I want this series to be. So first off, let's start a new series. Um, if you're first starting off, don't feel bad going with the no sweat. This game is a lot. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of mechanics. So you, if you are new to this, especially to this like genre, try the no sweat. Otherwise, we'll go with survival, which is kind of the default mode, I would say. This is going to be the coordinates that I am going to use. If you want, you can put in the same coordinates. That means your start will be the same as mine, and you can kind of like play along and do what the same as I am to like test out how things work. So that's this. I'm going with the first planet. These will be different options. They'll have different traits. Um, and it's kind of like it'll get harder the longer you go like down the line. They'll, um, they're really nice because they test you in different ways than the original one, but for now, for the first one, let's go with the, the default with no trades. Hit start, and the first thing you will do once it finishes loading is you'll get to pick your duplicates. And there's going to be a lot of different opinions on what kind of characters you want to start with. I'll show you what I look for, but you can just go random, you can see what other people do. If you are an experienced player, I would love for your like tips and tricks and all that. Comment it down below. One, I'd like to see it. Like I've put in a lot of hours, but there's still stuff I don't understand. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. It also means other people who are watching this to learn can also find different tips down below. So up here, you can choose to reroll your duplicate. This will just do random. Or if you use this drop down, you can choose between a specific type. So first, we're going to want a digger. It's like the main thing you're going to be doing at the start of the game. So I uh, enjoy having a digger and a builder combo. Um, when it comes down to the traits, obviously you can hover to see more details about everything. Uh, some of the traits, not that bad. Others are going to be a major pain. For example, um, gassy. Uh, they'll be farting up a bunch of natural gas that will just pollute your base, which you're dupes can't breathe and you don't want to have to deal with that so something like that something that makes them breathe more oxygen or eat more food you're going to want to avoid those these ones that decrease a certain skill very manageable as long as it's not one that is involved with what you're doing so you don't want to find someone who builds and has a negative to building or like if you were to have the digger have a minus to digging not a good idea <laughs> I think my second dupe, what I'm going to be doing is researching. Uh, that's another thing you're going to be doing a whole lot of at the start of the game. Um, I'm also going to do supplying so that if they're not researching, they're picking stuff up. That's something that a lot of players don't care about. It's something I personally like to, I like to keep the base clean. So I like someone who will go around and pick it up. But if that's what the, something you care about, just go with like a fully like high level researching and nothing else. And then for the last one, I'm going to go with a farmer. I'm going to try to get a farmer who can also ranch. This is kind of a not a terrible uh, negative. They will take down the decor around them, but there are outfits you can give them later on that'll like negate that. Also, at the start, everything's going to be hideous. Your dupe having terrible clothes isn't going to really uh, be much of a negative. So for the traits that I would really avoid if I could help it would be small bladder because uh, you don't want them having to go to the bathroom all of the time. Uh, if you're playing on certain maps with a lot of disease you may want to avoid biohazard which means they get uh, sick more often. Avoid bottomless stomach. Avoid mouth breather. Some people might say to avoid loud sleeper, the stoop snores, which will um, wake up all of the dupes around them. I think it's very easy to deal with. 
All you have to do is uh, schedule them to sleep at a different time with the dupes or move their bed further from everyone else. So I don't think that's a bad one. Uh, flatulence. Avoid that. They will emit uh, natural gas every 10 to 40 seconds, and that just fills your base. So I think that's probably one of the worst traits as at any point, but especially in the beginning. So avoid all of those traits. Down here, you can randomize your name or you can uh, choose one. You can't use the same calling name as another save. It uh, has like a conflict with that. So you'll want to pick a different one than other ones. I'm taking Utopia and making it into this because it's also for YouTube. I think I'm clever. <laughs> All right, so when you load in, first thing is you'll get this alert. It's a bit of the lore. You can read that here if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and the first thing you wanna do is POTS, <laughs> which is a space bar. I think by default. <laughs> Otherwise you can come up here and click. Oh yeah, see, it'll, if you hover, it says what the um, short key is. I will be telling you a bunch of the shortcuts because it makes life so much easier. So starting off here, we have the cycle. That's just days. Here, population, the highest stress from your dupes. You click on it, it will take you to the highest uh, stressed dupe. If they get too high of a uh, stress, uh, they'll have, if you look under bio, you can see what will happen when they get stressed. You want to avoid those as much as possible, honestly. We'll come back to that in a second. If anyone is sick, you can click here and it'll take you to them. And if you keep clicking, it'll cycle. This shows how much food you have and you'll have like a little graph here to the side. Here are the different speeds you can have. If you toggle red alert, it makes them ignore pretty much everything else and do what you're saying. Oh, look at their little faces. I'm sorry. I'll take it off. We're fine. It's okay. Don't panic. Get some good notifications for you on the side here. And if you click it, it'll um, open up a tab down here to help you. So under vitals, you can see um, anything health related to your dupes. You can filter up here. You can also pretty much anywhere hover to get more information. Uh, you can also click on this and it'll open up their um, information down here on the side. Under uh, consumables, this is where you will decide what you want your dupes eating. Uh, obviously at the start you want them to eat anything that they can get their hands on, but eventually you'll want to take down these like lower tier ones because uh, they'll be less happy eating raw food than they will be to be eating cooked. So eventually you can uh, turn that off. So this is, if you click here, you could toggle everybody. Toggling here will just do for any new duplicates what is the default. You can also use this to make it so they have nothing. Don't advise that for sure. And then here is schedule. I think this is pretty important. Um, there'll be things like showers and bathrooms will get full uh, when they first wake up or whenever you schedule downtime. So you'll probably want to offset new schedules. So what I usually do is have at least two going. You'll also get dupes who will do things like work better in the day or work better at night. So you'll want to schedule that appropriate appropriately. They also get a bonus if you give them more time to relax. So I tend to give them three. So then let's have it so that we have like three here. You can give them less sleep than the three hours. I think you can go down to two, but if they're in a task and they took too long to get back to their beds, then they don't sleep for very long and they don't like that. So we'll do that. And then here you can move different duplicates. Let's just take Frankie there, I guess. So they'll have, um, this helps offset it so people are always kind of working in your base. You can have a bunch of schedules. I've seen people where they shift it by one and then they just have like five versions. And then uh, as always hovering here, you can see what they'll be doing during those times. This is a, under priorities. This is a very important tab. This is going to dictate what your duplicates will decide to do the moment they have free time, basically. So like once they finish a task, this is how they decide what the ne next task is. If it's this pink, it means they're more um, skilled at it than other duplicates. So I usually put those up like so, though. I think Marie was the one we had for science. Yeah, so researcher, I really don't want her doing um, farming. So if you uh, right click, that will take it down. Left click, take it up. 
So we want that on standard for now. I'd rather if Marie wasn't um, researching that she would do these other things instead. And when they're deciding, the order will be uh, decided from left to right. So they're more likely to attack. The least likely would be to store things. Unless you really have this up. And then again, hovering, you can see what the different um, types of things you'll want. I usually have toggling up pretty high and life support pretty high. If I'm toggling something, like... I probably want to duplicate to it pretty quickly. Like if I'm locking a door, it's probably something I want to happen quickly while I'm still present. So I like toggling to be high. Life support is things that are keeping your base alive, like producing oxygen. You want them priority, uh, making that a priority. So that is the priority tab. You can also do enable proximity. This will have the dupes choose the closest, most urgent errand. For their next task. Uh, when disabled, duplicates can choose between two high priority based on a hidden priority hierarchy instead. This cuts down on travel time in areas uh, with lots of high priority errands and is useful for large colonies. That's good to know. Next we have uh, skills. So as they work, they'll level up. And then you put skills into their certain trees. If they have a heart here, they will get They'll get a boost to their morale just by getting to basically work on their dream jobs. Um, the higher you go down the tree, as you can see over here, the more morale they're going to need. So <laughs> as tempting as is, is to put as many points into a dupe as possible, make sure that you have the ability for them to have a high enough morale because it will cause them a lot of stress if they're not having the same amount of green morale as they have red requirement. <laughs> you, here you can also choose once they've started leveling up, you can give them little hats. It'll help you um, at a glance tell whose uh, main job is what. That's very helpful. And then if you hover over their names, you can see what skills they have. It helps to remind yourself um, kind of what you were planning for that that dupe in particular. I've also seen people um, change their dupes names. So it'll be like farmer blank. So even quicker, you can tell what you want with a certain dupe. Uh, research, this will open up once we build a research station down here. Uh, and then this is a very much a late game thing and it'll show you the star map. Here you can look at the stats for the um, day and you can see the next day you can go back you know when you have previous days um, it is important for things like how much are they eating so you can decide how much you need to produce or how much oxygen are they taking in so very interesting uh, and important stats here if you go to this summary here you can see um like achievements uh and What's really nice is they take screenshots and you can uh, watch as your growth space, uh, growth space, as your base grows. <laughs> and then down here, you'll get to see even more stats about like how much you're wasting in power. You want to keep that low, obviously. And so all very good stats. Obviously, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it could be ignored for quite some time. Uh, wait until you have um, your feet on the ground. Here is a very important tab. If you're confused by anything, you can search in here. Very useful. And as you go, you'll like find an item like this. If you click here, this will open that specific page and you can read about it, which I use all the time because I'm always finding stuff that is new to me or I've forgotten what they do, that kind of stuff. Here is this menu, always good. Here's another place you can find that um, achievements. So next, let's look at uh, the overlays that we have here. So this first one is oxygen and how breathable is it for your dupes. This includes not only the gas, but like the gas pressure. So if it's a really low gas pressure, but it's still oxygen, it'll be like barely breathable. So they could breathe there, but it's not going to be very good for them. Like it's not very helpful. So we want as much of this very breathable on the map as possible. This will help you when you get to powering stuff. Right now it won't be too helpful, but once you start building, this will help you see where the like the um, wires are, if they're 
strained or if they have too much on them, this kind of stuff here. Here is the temperature overlay, which can be very useful for discovering stuff. So like right here, we can see this is a vacuum because its temperature is so cold. Here we can see that this is going to be a warm biome, which is important to know because this can eventually leak into your base and get your base to be really hot. There's also toggles here. So like this will make your dupes lose body heat and that kind of stuff. This shows if their temperature is comfortable or not. And then we've got, this is an overwhelming um, UI at first, but once you filter it, it's very useful. So you can see that like this is water. If we had different types of water, like polluted water and stuff, that would be shown here. Here you can see the different gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide. So yeah, if you're looking for certain things, this is very helpful to filter by. Here you can see the areas that are lit up. These little bugs, they give off light. This machine gives off light, which we'll be using to our advantage once we start building the base. This is going to be important for things like your dupes do better if they have lights over their workstations, or certain plants require light to grow. This is kind of similar to the power overlay. This will show you where your water pipes are, that kind of stuff. This is the same as the previous, but with air, so you can pump like oxygen around the base, that kind of stuff. And here you'll see the vents. Decor uh, is kind of important because it helps with their morale. Here you can see what's giving them a positive, what's giving them a negative. Germs is kind of as you'd expect. Wow, there's none. Oh, here. So for example, here you can see their slime. The one you're going to be seeing a lot of is the food poisoning. That's uh, something they produce like when they go to the bathroom. So you'll be seeing quite a bit of that. Uh, certain plants put off pollen and so you'll be able to see that here certain of your uh, dupes are have allergies so that'll be important to know if you have a dupe with allergies here is the farming overlay here you can see the stages the plants are in so you can see these are all halted um, and if you check here it shows that it's because it's in the wrong gas or because it has the wrong pressure for the final one for now you have the room overlay. These are going to be very important for morale boosts. One of the first things we're going to work on after getting them bathrooms will be trying to get them a great hall because as you can see, it gives them a plus six morale, which is quite a boost. They'll get that boost every time they go in this room. Another thing that's important about these rooms is to see the max and min size. So if you're trying to plan out the size of your base, that's something you'll want to keep in mind is like there's a maxed size for rooms. Eventually you'll get more uh, tabs up here the further in like research you do. Also, all of these keys can be accessed through the F1 through F11 key. F12 will take screenshots by default for Steam. These are one of my favorite ones. The ones I use the most is probably the germ one. A lot of uh, other players usually just kind of ignore germs. <laughs> they don't care about it as much. I think it's easy enough to, to deal with them that I like to keep my base clean if I can. The water one's another one that I use quite a bit. So you'll you'll learn like this is an F6, this is F9. So you don't have to be clicking up here for that all the time. Here you can see things like, if you want, you can toggle. Um, let me know when batteries are dead or if their capacity is bad or you can just leave it off by default it'll tell you things like this one's an important one if your dupe is buried and can't breathe you want to know that so it'll notify you over here it'll also tell you about like um if buildings are buried and can't work anymore you know it'll tell you about food and you'll see over here you can s it's a bit of a graph so yeah you can choose between never visible visible if there's only an important alert or you can make it so that you can always see that. Uh, this eventually you'll be able to look through all of the materials you have. You can search up here. Um, it'll be important like how much copper do you have? You can come in here and search that. Uh, we don't have anything besides the food we start with so not a whole lot of information there. Uh, and then real quick we'll go through all of these. We won't be using them in this episode. Uh, I don't want these to be super long. <laughs> I can already tell it's already pretty long, but I don't want it any longer than it needs to be. So this one is the dig command. Pretty straightforward. What's useful about this is you can use it to measure. You can see that's 12 um, long. Oh, and right here, this is the priority. So you, 
it kind of works in tandem with the priorities. So this kind of has it, uh, it moves things up on here up, I believe. So if you throw some, this dig up at a nine, they'll, they'll make sure to dig that one very first. You can also um, use this button to get to priority screens. And then if you do top priority, this will put on a yellow alert. So it's like a weaker version of this where it, it means like someone get to this immediately, but it's not going to be like, don't sleep like a red alert would be. This button is cancel. Very useful. Dig is uh, for G, if you want to toggle that. C is for cancel. Then we have the demolish things. And, and it is very important you pay attention to this. So if you have a bunch of pipes and wires and things going through your floors and you hit all, you will <laughs> disconnect all of those things. And if you disconnect like a water pipe, it'll dump water on the floor. So you want to make sure that you're deleting exactly what you want. So you will want to go to like building and then choose that. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Uh, and the, to get this guy to come up is uh, X. I switch between X and cancel pretty often. Next priority, uh, it just, you, it's the same here. You can filter, you can prioritize a bunch of things like this. There you go. That'll mean they get to that as fast as possible. Default is going to be five. Priority here is uh, P, not one I use very often. Oh, you can do the priorities with L. Hey. <laughs> Reading tool tips is very important in this game. Next, we have move debris into storage. So let's see, let's have somebody dig this up. All right, now we have this bit on the floor. Uh, you can use move to storage like this. Usually they'll only do uh, pick up stuff if it's like the very last thing. They have nothing else to do. So if you want something picked up immediately, you'll want to use this move option. It also can be used to help filter stuff, but we'll get into that at a, at a later time. Let's go ahead and cancel that since we don't have storage. Mop up spills, uh, things like uh, if you dig into some water up above, it might spill down. Duplicates can be on the floor. Uh, you can break pipes that will all result in liquid in your base. So you'll use this to mop it up. It has to be, it can't be too deep. So if it's like a full block, they can't mop it. You'll have to find a different method of moving it around. Next, this is for enabling a harvest. So you can be like the next time when you guys can reach this harvest if it's ready. Otherwise it, they'll just like let it grow. And when it does is ready to harvest, they'll come up and get it. That's kind of like farming, telling them to farm things that are naturally growing. Very useful because you don't have to maintain these at all, but you can still get stuff from them. Uh, disinfect, this will help get rid of uh, these germs. Uh, you'll see this more once they get like bathrooms, but um, you can tell them if they like don't wash their hands after they go bathroom, they'll like go up a ladder and that ladder will be covered in germs. This will, you can use this to toggle them to, to clean it immediately instead of waiting until when they would feel like they should. <laughs> this attack creature is pretty straightforward. Uh, wrangle, this is what this button will do. So if you had a farmer that they could come and get creatures, they can't get these. So if you have creatures running around on your base, you can use this to wrangle them and then your rancher can put them into certain locations if you want later on. Ah, and then this one is extract uh, pipe contents, a tool I basically never use, <laughs> but probably should. <laughs> And as you saw, once we dug this up, you get these starting to open up. They won't open up until you have the materials to craft them. As you can hover, you can see what you're missing and all of that. Um, but I think that's all of the UI based information. Um, if you want to get rid of these, you hit escape. That'll close any, any of the UI or filters or any of the stuff you have is escape. So yeah, I think that's all I want to go through for this first episode. Next episode, we will start getting our base layout figured out. And the first thing we'll want to do would be to create a bathroom. <laughs> you don't want them peeing everywhere. It's a mess. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and that you found it useful. Uh, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.